Hello everyone, it's Mimi again from Mimi's Worms, and I've had a lot of people asking about the difference in worm species, so I wanted to show y'all the difference in, in these worms. So right here we have a European Nightcrawler, and if you look closely at the Clotellum, it's further back. You'll also notice that it's larger than the, that's the blue worm. You'll see how long the blue worms are right here. This is a blue worm. And if you can look real close, you'll see for one how quickly they move. And then the, how close the clotellum is to the head. So, right. Well, if I can get him to be still long enough. But the clotellum is right close to the head there. And then on the red wiggler, it's like the euro, but they're a lot smaller. If you can see the difference in them. And the clotellum again is closer to the head, uh, further down from the head. See how long, far back it is here. This one, it's really kind of hard to tell on him, but it's right there. They have yellow tails. And if you watch this blue worm and how he moves, he moves a lot faster um, than the others do. That's a really good way of kind of telling the difference. They're real long and skinny. And like I said, that head is very close, or clotellum is very close to the head. Long and skinny, red wiggler, just not quite as big as the Euro. Well, quite a bit not as big. But the Euros are plump and fat. Blue worm, Euro, red wiggler. See how long that blue worm is? Long and skinny. Euro is long and fat. Red wiggler is short and plump. There's the clotellum right here on this one. So they're much further back with the clotellums than the blue worms. Now, depending on your feedstock, some of these uh, worms will get darker in color. And if you notice on this Euro, you can really see some stripes on them and their rings. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. So I don't think this is getting good focus there. But. That blue worm, the clotellum, is right there. So it's much, much closer, much closer to the head than the clotellums on the red wigglers or the euros. Now, a lot of people ask me what my favorite worm is, and I will tell you it depends, because each one of these worms have a a job. So. The Euro is my favorite worm for fishing, although they make really good composters as well. But they are the best worm for fishing. If you want a good composting worm, and you can keep them in a climate-controlled environment, the blue worm is a really good choice for composting. Now, you'll hear a lot of negativity on the blue worm, but I tend to feel like that's people that truly has not ever raised them, and 
uh, or maybe they, they are where it's really cold and they're trying to keep them outside. Um, if you're doing an outdoor bin and you're up north, those would not be a good choice. Um, but if you are doing them indoors and you can keep them above 30 degrees at all times, they are a very good composting worm. A lot of your commercial farms will use, uh, especially down in Florida and Texas, will use the uh, blue worms because they are so ferocious in composting. The red wiggler is a smaller worm, very docile. As you notice, they don't really do a lot of moving around like the other two worms do. And um, they can handle temperatures, uh, you know, northern temperatures, I should say. But any worm, if it starts dropping below 30, is going to get very um, lethargic and not really do a whole lot. They're just going to kind of go into hibernation, hibernation mode. <laughs> Although the red wigglers don't tend to die off where your blue worms may. But now the blue worms lay quite a few more cocoons than the red worm, red wiggler, or the European night crawler. So even if you did have a die off, they leave so many cocoons that come spring, you would just have a flourishment of more worms. So I don't really see why they get such a bad rap. Um, if you haven't tried them, I would suggest you try them. They're usually a cheaper worm just because people don't, they tend to believe what they read on the internet and have never raised them. So, you know, we have people out there saying that they do the mass exodus and all that. I raised those worms for about four years and I can tell you I never had a mass exodus. The only worm that I ever had a mass exodus with was the European Nightcrawler. And that was because we had a really quick temperature drop, drop and I didn't have the heat on in the greenhouse. So it was really my error because if you know uh, what you're doing, you won't have those kind of things happening. And with any worm, if you have them in their right environment, then they will uh, tend to just stay put and do what they were what they're supposed to do, and that's to make castings or make babies, whichever it is you're trying to achieve. And um, so that's the difference in the three types of worms. Um, again, if you haven't tried the blue worm, I would highly recommend it just because I think it gets a really bad rap and they make such great castings. And I think we put too much emphasis on you know having the pure red wigglers although that is what we grow um, we do have another farm that we get the blue worms from and uh, you know I just think that they're a great worm so if you haven't tried them give them a try and um uh, if you like the red wigglers, we carry those and we carry the euros. So, anyway, there you have it. Now you know how to tell your worms apart. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And we will try to answer them for you. Y'all have a wonderful day.